With this reignited discussion on cores for gaming, let's look at it from a different perspective. Why do games suck at utilizing cores, and do you, in your professional opinion, see this changing in the future, for example, with better implementation of Vulkan or DX12? Uh, well, I would argue that they don't suck, to be honest. I mean, looking closely, at especially the bigger AAA tiles that we typically test with over the last few years, a lot of them utilize eight or more cores very well, or at least they spread the load across the, you know, eight or more cores very well. So if you have a, a lower end eight core processor, you will see utilization higher on that, though something like a Ryzen 7 1800X, the frame rate will be lower, which does lower CPU utilization. But the point is, I think the games are spreading the load really well and using as much of the CPU as they need to, to at least do what they do in the game. I think the sort of, from your angle, where you're saying is they're not fully utilizing the higher end CPUs like your Ryzen 7 5800X, 5900X, and the 11th gen parts. And I'd say the reason for that is the fact that if you look at, I know it's not super accurate, but it's a pretty good rough guide, the Steam Hardware Survey, looking at that, 40% of all Steam users that take the Steam Hardware Survey say that they still use a quad core CPU, whether that's four cores, four threads, or four cores, eight threads, doesn't really matter. Point is, that's the amount of processing power they have. Uh, and what, what's like the fastest quad core at the moment? It's like the Core i7 7700K Something and around the there. Ryzen yep. 3 3300X. They're about the same, I think, and they're the fastest quad cores available or thereabouts. Taking all that information in, basically game developers, even today, they don't want to be alienating 40% of their customer base. If they make a game that requires even something like a, a six core processor with the performance of the Ryzen 5 5600X, there's going to be so many people that will not be able to play that game. And while we are seeing a shift towards that slowly, it's not going to happen overnight where all of a sudden you need a high end eight core processor. So they do spread the load, so you get a nicer, smoother experience with those high-end parts, or at least a, a powerful six-core processor, but it's still pretty well playable on like a four-core, uh, eight-thread CPU, such as the 7700K or whatever. So that's sort of the reason. You've got to remember you can't be leaving a huge part of your customer base behind when releasing a new game, because that just really heavily impacts your sales yeah. in, in a negative way. I think most game developers as well, they want the games to be running mostly GPU limited for that reason. It tends to be easier to scale <laughs> GPU features. So turning yes. on or off features like shadows or even just something as basic as the resolution is generally speaking, very GPU, very GPU dependent. So you can scale across that wide range of GPUs that people have with those features. Whereas CPU features, yeah, you can scale a few things like you know draw distance and level of detail type effects on the CPU or NPC counts. You see that in games from time to time. But mm -hmm. a lot of the time, if you make a game, let's say, and you want to put thousands of NPCs in it, and then you also let people scale that down to you know a handful of NPCs on lower end CPUs, that has pretty significant gameplay implications, whereas changing the resolution or changing the shadows doesn't necessarily have that same sort of effect. That's right. So I think that's why Everyone's we see a similar experience. Yeah, it's why we see much narrower CPU related features and why mm -hmm. you see these modern eight core and even six core processors sitting with very low utilization because they just can't push those effects at the moment. Obviously, as you said, that, that mm -hmm. is going to change. The other thing as well yeah. with, with utilization is that, you know, those numbers that you see don't aren't always a hundred percent accurate in the bottlenecks of the CPU and you know the actual mm -hmm. utilization because something like those old first gen Ryzen processors, they may be only utilizing you know thirty or forty percent, but they may be limited by the amount of cache that they have, the latencies to the memory, cache latencies, all those sorts of things, which don't they don't really come across in those utilization numbers. Yeah, the whole utilization thing. <sighs> I mean, even testing CPUs in general can be a bit misleading because if you're looking for how heavily utilized something like a Ryzen 5 uh, 5600X is, that's a very fast CPU that can push very high frame rates, basically as high as the 16 core variant. But to see it very heavily utilized, you've got to pick a game where it does render or allow hundreds of FPS to be rendered with a high end GPU. And then you do see quite high utilization. You can get up around the 80% mark and you think, oh, okay, well, that's, you're sort of starting to get to the point where you're using all of that CPU and it's not long before you run out of headroom. 
if you dial back the FPS to like 144 FPS, say your frame cap it there, just or just below your monitor's refresh rate for that, the the sweet spot with input, you know, latency, well, the CPU utilization drops away heavily. Like you could be halving the CPU utilization in that instance. So, yeah, it's a bit of a a complex discussion, and it can often be quite misleading as to how heavily you really are utilizing your CPU, uh, because again you're probably not using something like an RX 6900 XT at 1080p with whatever CPU it is. You're probably running at 1440p. And again, that will see that you're mostly GPU bound or becoming more GPU bound. And that will again, lower the CPU requirements. So yep. it's a balancing act. But basically, by determining what kind of CPU you need to play at 1440p or 4K by testing at 1080p with a flagship GPU, not a great <laughs> way of doing it, to be honest. But it does let you know how different CPUs differ in terms of performance. So obviously it makes sense for CPU testing 